Welcome, 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 uh, everybody, to another episode of Walking with the Master. And um, I'm sure you can see by the smile on my face <laughs> that I have, I have, you know, there are masters and then there are true masters. <laughs> you know, there are those who are called masters, but then there are those who are proven and bona fide. And I have the awesome uh, pleasure, everybody. I have the awesome pleasure to introduce to you, and I, you know, and I'm taking so long, but you can see him <laughs> and you know him. This is the great, great uh, Grandmaster Ron Van Cleef, man, the original black dragon. Now, he wasn't just the dragon because they had a lot of dragons out there, <laughs> but he was the black dragon. And it was awesome for us as, I mean, for myself as a child to be able to see someone who looked like me on the screen and not, not just someone else in the art. So again, welcome everybody to Walking with the Master. You know, this is um, something that is uh, set up and is based on uh, Dr. Moses Powell and our walk with him, our talk with him. But, you know, this opportunity that I have is to take a master who has walked with him and walk with them. So, sir, I'm going to ask you to take my hand <laughs> and walk around. But welcome, welcome, Grandmaster. Welcome, uh, 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 the great uh, Black Dragon. How are you, sir? Wonderful, Anthony. Thank you so very much, really. I, I appreciate <laughs> this so much. Man, you don't know how I appreciate it. And uh, again, I'm tickled because, you know, there, there are those who do interviews and uh, their lives are not necessarily intertwined with those who they interview. Uh, but, but mine is, and I'm so happy to uh, uh, have you. Oh, a long time. <laughs> Man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, uh, so I, I want to get right, right to uh, some of the things. What I normally do, sir, is I open up with uh, going to the roots. And I'd like for you to begin to share with Everyone here, man. Hey, listen, do you understand that we on with the Black Dragon? <laughs> you better enjoy this here. All right. But um, uh, give us a walk through your beginning in the art. How did you you get the art? When did you get it? And, and let's, let's go through some of that, sir. Well, I'm a Brooklyn boy, you know. I yes, started sir. at the St. John's Community Center in 1959. Mm. Uh, Grandmaster Moses Powell was my first teacher. And at the same time, I studied with Grandmaster Ronald Duncan. They were right. both at the St. John's Community Center. That's right. That's right. It was, a, it was a wonderful experience because until then, I had not even known anyone that was a martial artist of that stature. You know? Man. Moses Powell and Ronald Duncan were my, my Batman, my Robin, my Superman, my Cato, all of that in one because they were so masterful in their arts. It was amazing. I mean, it was truly, I was 16 years old. Mm. And to see something like that, it was, it was a mind blower, you know? It was a mind blower. Yes. You know, you know um, I also, I actually taught in St. John's Recreation Center, but Clearly, it wasn't near the time. <laughs> you said 1959. I was born in 1958. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was one year old. And uh, uh, man, and, and you, um, uh, like Doc and like uh, Grandmaster Ronald Duncan and whatnot, paved the way. And I could say that I actually taught in places you all were and taught and studied. So that's that's awesome. So yes, sir, please. So that's where I started with, with uh, Grandmaster Moses Powell and Grandmaster Ronald Duncan. And uh, at the same time, I met uh, George Popio and Maynard Minor. Hmm. Uh, and then I met uh, Peter Urban through uh, Moses Powell. Wow. Introduced me to him because he said that uh, I had such a way of uh, 
exploring the martial arts that I wanted to see more. Um, Jiu-Jitsu was great, karate was great, um, but to see other other entities in the martial arts really sort of piqued my interest in martial arts as a whole, you know? Yes. You know, my real training started when I went um, in the Marine Corps and I was stationed in Okinawa. I, I studied with uh, Grandmaster Shimabuki. I studied Ishinru and Shorinru. Yes. That was in 1960. 60 to 60, 62. Mm. That was quite an experience the, to see how the Asians taught the martial arts, their, 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 their discipline, their, their respect code, their ethics code. Um, quite different from Brooklyn, you know? Yes. It, it, uh, it stimulated me to want to even learn more. And so, you know, when I came out of the Marine Corps in 1966 after going to Vietnam, I started really uh, concentrating and studying with Grandmaster Peter Urban and Frank Ruiz, who was one of Sensei Urban's students. And uh, I was with them for the uh, origination and development of the Nisei Goju system, which is one of the uh, fighting systems from the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Hmm. You know, I, I met Little John in like 19. 67, 68, and uh, I, I was truly amazed. I mean, that's why I, I got him to work with us on the film Super Weapon, because he was a super weapon. <laughs> Little John was one of my first um, sparring situations. He, he kicked me in the stomach with a spinning back kick, and then he chopped me on the side of my neck, you know, with those, with those chops. And, you know, it, it made me understand that hands and legs work together because once little John started moving, um, it's impossible to stop him, you know? Put yeah. hand, foot hand, foot hand, foot hand, that circular and semi-circular stuff that he would do. Uh, he was one of the most amazing martial arts uh, fighters that I've known in my career. And I fought all over the world, you know? Yes. I, I fought in tournaments for 56 years. Wow. I fought in 900 tournaments. You know, when, when I retired from karate uh, tournaments in, it was 02, 2002, I was 60 years old and I fought in Henry Cho's All American. And I took first place in sparring and tackle. And mm. That was quite, quite a, a trip for me. Wow. It was my first time wearing contact lenses. So it was, I was able to see everything that I didn't see. I had fought in, in Henry Cho's tournament 15 years straight. I never took first place until 2002. <laughs> when you got your contact. <laughs> third place, second place, third place. Yeah, we, we make the finals most of the time, but when I put those contacts in, and you know what, I never used them again after that. Wow. It was such a problem getting out and stuff. Oh. I just decided that I didn't want to do it. and. Um, it was a great experience to see everything, but I figured that I would not wear contacts for the rest of my life, and I would be outside without them. So I just decided that I wouldn't use them again. I would go with what I had. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. So, and that's what I, I did for over 50 years, because in the street, you don't have a chance to put on your glasses and say, hold on, wait a second. Get my contacts in this one's a Let me get, get my eye stuff in there. You don't have to do that. So it, it, Sanukas was a way of dealing with life with realistic terms through the martial arts. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. I, I, I enjoyed the philosophy and the psychology of Dr. Powell. Yeah, he was a realist. He from the real school. All that stuff looks good, but can you fight? That was his his yeah. mind. Can you fight? And if, if it were not for him, I definitely would have not done any of what I've done in my life. You know, he, me... he was my my motivation. But I never made black belt. You know, I think I was like a green or purple when I went in the Marine Corps. Mm. Yes. I made my first black belt in karate in Okinawa before 
I, I never made black girl with, with some of this, which was one of my goals, you know? Yeah. But yes. That's what wasn't meant to happen. But you know, um, those days, those days, a purple belt back in those days <laughs> is not a purple belt today. Oh, the purple belts are terrible today. <laughs> and I've been studying with the Gracies for the past nine and a half years. Yes. And I took off my red belt. I put on a white belt mm. nine and a half years ago to check that out. Because I knew that I was, uh, my, my training had been unbalanced and, and uneven. I spent over 50 years developing a stand-up game. And when I fought Royce Gracie at 51 years old in UFC 4, I realized that I didn't have a ground game. And so since then, I've put particular attention into developing that ground game. And uh, in 2011, I started studying with Grandmaster um, Elson Gracie. I put on the white belt and I've been there ever since. It's, it's a beautiful experience. You know, I started competing when I was 74 years old. <laughs> 74 in jiu-jitsu, no more karate competition, no more yes. punches and and stuff like that. Yes. But the competition in jiu-jitsu is quite amazing. It's, it's quite amazing. I fought two years ago just before the pandemic at the Worlds in Las Vegas. I lost my second match to a 35-year-old, 210-pound kid, but he was so good. Anthony, he was so technical, you know? Mm. Took me down, I reversed it, I, I mounted him, and then he reversed that. It was it was really beautiful, man. It was really beautiful. And I'm enjoying it. But you know, this this I have to I have to go here because I'm gonna be 80 in another year. <laughs> yes, this is listen, you you know, you I, I'm I got I'm trying to hold myself. I'm really trying to hold myself. <laughs> See, because because the 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 kind of man now let's let's talk about martial artists for a moment. Now um, you said something early. I want to I want to get back to where you are right now because that's something that we have to talk about. The kind of mind that can uh, be at the age you made a transition to start something new and. <laughs> And, and you started something new without any, uh, any barriers, you know? And, and you're dealing with 35-year-old guys. You're dealing with young guys. And you're and not... class is 20 years old. 20 years old. Uh, the average person in the jiu-jitsu class, and there's like 40 of them in class. Look at that. See, see, it's, 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 this is an incredible thing. So I want to go back, all the way back into... Um, uh, St. John's and when you were with, with Doc and whatnot. And you said that he introduced you to someone else. Now you're talking about a proficient martial artist who is already had a record and so forth, but he introduced you to someone else. Now, now that's got to be very powerful because uh, martial artists and teachers today, they don't want you to even see someone else. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. You know, the, 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 the wonderful thing about Dr. Powell was that he gave you this, this ability to just look at everything, not just one particular style or one particular system. Yes. As he did in his life, he took things from Shotokan, he took things from Professor B, he took Ashram. things from took things from, and then he, he, he formed them into his system, which is what I tried to emulate with Chinese Goju in 1971 when I started the system. Nowhere near as uh, proficient, you know, but <laughs> I, I was trying to interpret what he said and what Grandmaster Peter Urban told me about being able to uh, fill your cup and mm. when it's not full and how to empty it and we fill it. Yes. You know, most people, I took a lot of flack when I took off my red belt and I put on the white belt. Hmm. A lot of flack. So many people thought I left my system. I, did. I didn't do any of that. Everything I do is Chinese goju. Everything I do yes. is part of my system. The system, if it doesn't continually change, you're not learning. Come on. You're not learning. Beautiful.
and in, in the jujitsu, I started with jujitsu with Moses Powell, but it was a, more of a traditional form. Lots, leaders, throws, takedowns. It didn't concentrate solely on the groundwork. That's right. And what I realized that, man, at 67 years old is when I started with the Gracies, mm. I realized that I didn't have a, a good foundation of groundwork. And groundwork in itself is a whole other art. It, it really is because any of the, the BJJ guys, their, their goal is not to get hit, get in, clinch, take you down, and then work their BJJ magic on you. Yes. And most karate card that I know, if you close the gap and you take them to the ground, they're lost. Yes, sir. I mean, all the punches and all that stuff, it's, it's all good. I mean, I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying that on the ground, the Gracies, the Machados, that's their, that's their game. Yes. That's yes. their game. And there aren't any better than that on the ground. Yes, sir. I, I don't believe it's great for a multiple attack. And I wouldn't certainly, if I were fighting more than one person, I would definitely not go to the ground. Yes, know? sir. Even if I had the ability to take a person down, who knows who's with them? That's right. But I've been in street fights and things when I was younger, and I, I beat somebody up, and all of a sudden I'd be on the ground because somebody hit me in my head from behind. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's an awareness thing. It's, it, you have to be conscious of everything, you know? And I'm, I'm so, so happy that Dr. Powell gave me that insight to be able to understand that there's more to it than just that. You yes. know, we can be proficient at that. And if, if you notice all the MMA guys, they're proficient at this stuff, but they also work their ground game. Yes, because sir. Because they know inevitably in that type of sport, and maybe even on the street most of the time, it will get to the ground if you don't clock the guy immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not a believer that any style is a 100% catch-all for everything, you know? So look at all the martial arts that have ever been founded. They've all taken things from other arts. There isn't one around that's not taken. All the African grappling techniques are all coming out now. Yes. Are all coming out now through these different forms. I mean, you can't tell me that uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not an African form. Right. There's no way you can say that. Brazilians are African. That's yes. where the ship stopped first. That's Before right. they got here, the ship stopped there and let them up there, and that's where it started. Right, right. So, I'm impressed by the ability of someone or anyone to just put the ego aside and get on the mat and just work. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful... You know, I was a choking dummy for almost three years, Anthony. Mm. Every white belt, everybody, they choked my neck. Sometime the next morning, my wife would be feeding me food and I could hardly swallow because my throat was sore from the <laughs> rear naked choke and stuff like that, you know? But after two or three years, we develop the tucking in the neck like a turtle and stuff like that. Yeah. So they don't get the neck, you know? They go for the neck like immediately. First neck, then the rest of the joints. Mm -hmm. But first neck, no matter if they go for an, an ankle lock or a knee bar, they're setting that up so when you reach down there to stop that, your neck is open and it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Next someone's mm -hmm. back to cover. I find it, the BJJ to be like chess. It, there's only maybe 10 or 12 moves in there. You know that? Mm -hmm. 10 or 12 moves. But the order in which you do that becomes like 144 different movements. Uh huh. You yes. know? Yes, sir. And so, like Helsa Gracie tells me all the time, I, sh I shouldn't be sparring. I love sparring. I can't stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had injuries. Um, three, four years ago, I was grappling in class with a six foot eight, 340 pound, 30 two-year-old guy. Neil <laughs> Valley, he mounted it. He broke five ribs. Mm. Mm. Five ribs. And as he went for the choke, I bit through my tongue, 
So I had six stitches on the top and three on the bottom on my tongue. Wow. My wife said, don't go back there. How could I not go back there? <laughs> <laughs> it took months to heal. I mean, I couldn't roll for almost a year. Wow. I didn't take any pressure on me. Right. You know what five ribs at one time is? You can't even breathe properly without pain. Right. It, it was, and I was 70 when that happened. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. 25. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. Six foot eight, 340. That's a lot of beef, man. I've tried to choke him. He has a 26 inch neck. <laughs> I, had him, I had him in the choke one day underneath my arm, you know, in here, right? He picked me up like a baby and threw me on the floor like a flapjack, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But then you watch someone like Kelsey and Grace, he's 135 pounds. I figured I'd roll right over him, right? Yes, the nine years training, and whatnot. He treats me like a little baby. You're using too much death. He's smiling and laughing at me the whole time while he's choking me. <laughs> and B bar, you know, crucifix. I mean, I watched him at 67 years old roll with 20 people in a row, right? Yes. All kids, you know, 18, 20, 25, and, uh, and finished them all in like 10, 15 seconds. All of them, each one of them out. I mean, even this 360 pound guy, I watched him take him out many times, submission many times. He'd, he'd get in a, he'd mount him, side control, and he'd squirm right out. And by the time you look around, he's on his back choking him, and the guy's going, you know. So it's, it's all about technique and mindset. Yes. I mean, yes. I, I've never wanted to quit, even though I was told that. Uh, you're too old. I've heard all of the uh, that that kind of negative stuff. Um, sure, I'm old, but I think if I stop training, I'm going to age 50 times as fast. I'm going to put on 100 pounds for sure because I don't I don't eat properly. You know, I eat with my 15 year old son, meat burgers, all kinds of stuff. You know, <laughs> not the best. But uh -huh. I've been doing this for so many years. Yes, you know, I haven't stretched in 55 years. Wow. Do you know I never warmed up to spar at the tournament? Wow. Did you know that? No. Wow. I take three deep breaths. That's it. <laughs> and at 78, I can still split. Wow. And I don't, I, I don't ever stretch. I don't ever do any of that stuff. I don't even do the warm-ups in, in the dojo. I go directly to the sparring. I sit in the corner, I watch the stretching, I do the drills, you know, with everybody, right? But then the sparring, yeah, I'm, I'm at home then, you know? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I know that you understand that feeling. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And it doesn't matter if I'm submitted or if I, if I submit somebody. That has no meaning to me at all. Yes, sir. It has meaning to me is to do the best I can whenever I'm there. And I know everybody's stronger, everybody's younger, everybody's faster. So it, it allows me to really start to work the technology of the system. Yes. Uh, the well, you, aspects. You, you know, um, as you said, I, I do understand. And that's why I'm, you know, in, in the young, uh, in a younger terminology, I'm tweaking. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but. Um, the thing that I want, and, and you're not one to do this, and and that's why in, in our conversations we've had on the phone, you know, I'm just in awe. I'm I'm appreciating the conversation because you're not talking about who you have been and who you are. You're talking. You you you're a new person talking to me about your experiences. You're enjoying those ex experiences. And, and, and I appreciate that so much, but I know, see, I know you didn't just start, you know what I mean? You, you may have started with, with uh, uh, BJJ and you've been doing that. See, but you're a master who has studied many different styles 
who you have produced your own system that is unlike others, still today, it's not like anyone else. So you have something and, and then you take that. So I want to deal with your mindset. I want to deal with, see, because your mindset is a master's mindset, but it's is a white belt's mindset. Yeah, that's 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 and, that's and it's, what Senator Irving told me. Keep the that's it. Away. So, so I want you to just kind of share with some of those, uh, uh, not some, share with everyone in terms of being able to do what you are doing. What do you have to go through personally, mentally, to move? in that kind of way. Now, th there's, there's a couple things now. You got one that is just transitioning into arts and having the, the mindset of a beginner coming into it and wanting that. But then you have the age situation. You have where um, uh, people are trying to stay alive. They're trying to, uh, well, let's oh, yeah. not stay alive, but let's, they're trying to not get hurt, you yeah. see. But you go into these things and hurt is a part of it. So I want to hear what you Yeah, he, let, tell me, tell us what's going on. You know, everything in life requires pain. And it's, it's more mental pain than physical pain. You know, there, there's a lot of ego in the martial arts. Yes, yes, yes. Not as much in, in the Brazilian systems because uh, it's... It's like it used to be in karate. You are who you are because of what you can do and what you think. Yes. In, in jiu-jitsu, guys come in off the street all the time and they want to roll with the guys. And, you know, Kelsey Gracie makes me roll with any new person that comes in that says they're <laughs> black or this or that or whatever. And, and it's his way of pushing me to be able to to ex extend my, my, my knowledge base by seeing different techniques. You know, guys come in from different schools of jujitsu, like the Machados, they do more, more knee stuff, more ankle stuff, more, more uh, uh, guillotine kind of things, uh, more triangles. So it, it gives you a chance to not just see what they do in your own dojo. That's why I love competition. Because it, the competition isn't against anyone else. The competition is against yourself. Mm. All competition is yourself versus yourself. It isn't versus another person. I mm. lost it in, in, at the World's Cup years ago because I was not good. I didn't pick up the signs. I didn't. My instinct wasn't quick enough. My 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 clarity of, of what they were doing didn't pick up. My antenna didn't pick it up soon enough. Yes, so it, it's it's mindset. You have to be able to know what your capacity is, what, and you really have to know what your deficiencies are. Mm. I knew when I started jujitsu that was old, the oldest person in the dojo, I started at 67. Wow. The average age is 20 and below. So that in itself is a giant challenge. At first, I thought they were taking it easy. And I said, no guys, no, I, I, I I mean, you respect me and all of that stuff, but I want what what everybody else does. I want the same. I want the same technique that you do with this person with me. And and don't 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 soften up. Don't, don't do anything that um, would make me feel as though I don't have to put out like everybody else. And I believe that in martial arts, you got to put out exactly what you have, and then you got to go. You got to exceed your limits. Hmm. exceed your standards you have to really just uh settle for what you know but try to explore your possibilities beautiful that, that, and that's what martial arts is everybody's no good when they start everybody no matter what art it is you know right right it, i told you i was a choking dummy for three years i got choked I probably do four or five five minute rounds per class three nights a week. So we're talking about being choked 40 times mm. per week. You know what that is on your neck? <laughs> I practice all kinds of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yes. But after a while, you start to develop tucking your neck in, you know, protecting that neck thing. And once you start to do that, 
they have to do something to move your hands. Once they make contact to move your hands, then you can go to wrist locks, arm bars, all kinds of stuff. So it's patience. I think jujitsu is one of the most patient arts there is. Because lots of times, guys will be on top of me with side control, and you're not getting up out of there. I mean, there's no way you can shrimp out. You can. It's not happening. So you have to be patient enough to finally frame out, you know, and then start your shrimp, and then start to go out the back door and all kinds of stuff. But it's it's a monster, man. It it, it is a monster. Um, I, I love it so much. I feel like a kid in class. I'm so happy when I go there. I'm smiling. Everybody's like, oh, shit. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm smiling and I'm so happy. And when it's smiling time, I go to the biggest guy. I go to the biggest, strongest, h- highest level guy that I can find. Yes. You know? yes. That's where I'm going to get my thing. You yeah. know? Yes. Green belts and purple belts can submit me, sure. But I'd rather go to the black belt where he has the capacity to, to do it quicker. And I have the ability to see superior technique. Yes. And some black belts, they're so good. They'll let you put them in a choke, and then they'll get out of it and reverse it. I mean, like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm not letting anybody put me in a choke so I can get out of it. Okay? <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Our teacher, Nelson Gracie, he, he, he makes us start out in those positions. Mm. Start out mounted. Imagine starting your five minutes. He's already on top of you, sitting on your sternum, you know, with both hands on your throat. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that's where they start. So not only do you have to not get choked, you got to get from underneath that guard. You got to reverse it. You got to sweep. You got to, you know, you got to do that whole thing. It's, it's beautiful. Man. It's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm so happy that I'm able to do it. I yes. know some people my age, and you know, I've been in this dojo almost 10 years. I've seen people come and go. And there were only maybe a half a dozen people in these 10 years that I've seen that were 50 years old. Mm. A handful. Yes. And guess what? They all quit. <laughs> How can that be? That's that's 28 years ago for me. I'd, be, I would, I'd have been a monster <laughs> if I had started 28 years ago. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. And it, it, it's, it's very disappointing to go to tournaments. And like at the Worlds, I went, nobody in your division. Mm. What kind of man? Right. You know, I mean, and there's a doctor in Helsing School. <laughs> He's 70. He just made black belt after 22 years. Wow. That's how the progression is. I've been there. Shit, next month will be 10 years. Mm. I was a white belt three years. I was a blue belt five years before I made purple. And I've been purple almost two years now. But it's slow. Like Helson said to me at class last week, he said, you're going to make black belt in another five years which means I'll be 85, 83. And that's okay. I'm in no rush anyway. If they put a wrapper on me now, I'd feel really bad. Because <laughs> It really is. You know? yeah. It really is. It's like, oh, no. And, you know, with the Gracies, it's different. Every time you change belts, you have to go through the gauntlet. You know what the gauntlet is? No, sir. The gauntlet is when you take your gi top off, and you crawl on your hands and knees while everybody's lined up in the class, and they're whipping you on your bare back with their belts. Oh, and every God. belt change, this is what they do. When I made blue belt uh, seven years ago, right? Uh, I was getting ready to do that, and Helsa said, no, 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 you're too old to do it. I said, no way that I'm skipping that. There's no way that I'm skipping that. I took my guitar off. I got on my hands and knees. I went back and forth. And these guys whipped me like a like a slave. I had mm. welts. I had welts on my back. Somebody whipped me on the side of my face. You know, you know, mm. before you come have any and they're on both sides. And you got to go down the line and then you turn around and you go to go back through the line. Back through. It is a monster, man. But by the end, you feel so good. You, you, you got it's like a slave, man. You got you actually have marks. You know what I mean? With your best friends are like <laughs> Wow, wow. 
it's beautiful. You know, yes. I'm a three stripe purple guy. I've got one more stripe that Helson wants to give me, not give me, that I've earned um, before I make brown belt. But I know that um, in Helson school, guys make brown belt and they may be there another eight, 10, 12, 15 years. I know guys 35 years old, they've been there 20 years and they're brown belts. Wow. So they don't rush that. Every Gracie school you go through, the curriculum is exactly the same. Mm. It's like a high school. Your diploma, your, your curriculum is exactly the same in each school. Everybody has their little spin on the sparring aspect stuff, but their combatives and their 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 drill stuff and their their their, their, their curriculum is exactly the same. And there's something beautiful about that because I've been to Paris and I've been to Germany and got on the floor and I felt like I was in my own dojo. I mean, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Nice. Uh, I feel about this jujitsu the same way I felt when I first started with, with Dr. Kyle. Mm. It's a brand new world. Every time I go, I see something new, you know? And, and I go ahead of time and I watch the kids' class because I learn a lot from the kids. The kids are so acrobatic and they're so flexible, you know? Yes. I tore a muscle in my back because a guy had me, uh, I had him in my, my guard, you know, legs around his waist, and he bent me over like a clam. And when your feet are touching the ground over your head behind you, <laughs> you know, you, that's some pressure. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That, that is some pressure. So I tore uh, muscle in my lower back. Mm. Took me out for months, but came back, you know. I'm not, I'm, there's no way I'm quitting. There's no way I'm quitting. I'm making black belt miss if it kills me. I told Helson. If it kills me, I'm going to make black belt. And I plan to, whether I'm 83 or 85, I plan to compete one time as a black belt. Look at that. I am. There's no way that I'm not going to compete one time as a black belt. Because I've had the chance to compete as a white belt, a blue belt, a purple belt. I want to compete as a brown. And I, I want to compete in a black belt division. Because I saw the black belt division at the Worlds. Wow. Those mm. guys are really clean. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah. Clear crystal stuff. And it's wow. You know? Yes, sir. I lost at the Worlds two years ago to the guy that won the division. Mm. I didn't feel that bad. I only lost by one point, too. <laughs> but he, he really was a lot better than me. He could, the guy was reading my mind, Anthony. Mm. He was reading my mind. I, I really feel because everything I did, he was already there. <laughs> oh, man. What's, 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 and then you start getting panicky because you, you're running out of ammunition, you know? Yes, sir. No, 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 no. You know, it, it, it's really, it's really fascinating. I mean, it's really fascinating. You know, I, I love these uh, five minute rounds and we do three, four, five minutes per class, you know? And you don't know how long five minutes is until a, a 320 pound guy is on you. <laughs> for, for two of those minutes, you know? What I mean? Right. You're sweating. Guys are sweating. Sweat's falling into my mouth when I'm rolling. <laughs> it's, it's, quite a, it's, quite, it's quite busy. Yes, but yes. I'm really loving it. There's no way, even after I make black belt, I think that what I'll do after this, I'll go into Tai Chi. <laughs> yes, sir. But my body needs a a way of recuperating and and, and healing, you know. Yes. And I think yes. that Tai Chi, Chi Gun, these these softer kind of things will help me. As I mean, I'm going to be ninety before I know it, you know. So, yeah. do I want to be rolling like Helson's father? I rolled with him when he was ninety two years old. Mm. Elio, I went to class. 92, he took me out in about eight seconds and he was smiling. He says, no, no, don't use so much power. You know, and I'm looking at this 113 pound <laughs> old man and just abusing me. This was around my neck, around my throat, right? It felt like a wire, you know, a mm. wire, like a telephone wire. Right. That's how thin it was and how tight it was on my neck, man. And every breath I took, 
I couldn't take another one because it was getting tighter and tighter, like an anaconda. Every little bit he got, it just got tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah. You know, imagine 92, 93 years old, he went to the dojo, came home, went to sleep, didn't wake up. What a beautiful way to go. Awesome. At his last wonderful workout, he choked all of us out, made us look like retards. <laughs> you know? mm, mm, mm. Beautiful. You, you, you know, um, let me just talk to the audience for a second. I, I, want, I want you all to, again, understand that this man from in the 50s, all the way up to now, he has not taken a break. He has continued and not just continued in what was the known, he's gone into the unknown and he's constantly learning. So, uh, you know, I want us to, to really look at what is going on. He's, you, you, you hear how he's enjoying, <laughs> he's enjoying being pinned and, and he's learning so much and it is so beautiful. I just wanted to say, say that because, you know, uh, you, someone can get lost in the now, but you don't know, you got to get the history. You know, this is something too, uh, Grandmaster, that uh, Doc had stated, in, in a, and I've mentioned it in other of the podcasts. He said, I am Sanukis. And when he said, I am Sanukis, I didn't quite understand it when I was coming through. I didn't, you know, sure. it was kind of yeah. like, you know, you're, you know, of course, not, you know, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but, but it was like, uh, you're Sanukis, then what are we, you know, what am I, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, because I'm looking at Sanukis as a system, but I didn't understand it as the man. Yes, he was Sanukis. It was him. We were studying. Ah, so when someone looks at you, they have to understand they can't start now. There are those who start at this period in your life with you and they think that they know you and they don't know you. They have to study where you came from so that they can understand those periods so that you can, you know, that's why I'm so tickled right now because I, I'm, you know, I know of the history. I, 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 I and, and of course I don't know, like, I don't know all of the history, but I, I have my whole history, my whole life. I know you, so of you. So it's so beautiful that one can take on the position and the mindset and the attitude after having so much, like you mentioned about egos and all of that. This is an, this is evidence of being void of ego where it overcomes you, but you are, you are true to the art itself and the development of yourself. So I, I you I know, I to say that, you know? I Sir? I not the art anymore. I am the art. Yes. That's, that's the point. That's, that's so beautiful. So Doc was Sanukis and you are the art. And you gave are. me that. Yes. He, me, he banged it into my head. Yes. I yes. Still have that yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. So this is, I mean, I, I, this, a lot of this is for my students. It's for everybody, but it's for my students so that they can begin to understand. They get locked sometimes on being, getting rank and not on the art itself, being a part of the it. The rank means nothing. Yes, it sir. Really means nothing. You know, I don't believe in the grandmaster thing. Yes. All that, but I would never refer to myself that way. Yes, um, sir. I feel like I'm a student that didn't quit. That's that's all. You know? <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. I never thought of myself as good either. Mm. I'm like a terrible purple belt. I hardly submit people in class. You know, I'm not being submitted very often anymore. And that's the only good thing I can say is that I've developed a defense in that uh, unless you're a black belt, I don't think you're going to submit me. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I'm going to I'm going to neutralize your attack. I might not be able to finish you, but I'm going to make sure that you don't finish me. 
And that's yeah. how that works in, in, in the sparring with the jujitsu with me at this point. Yes. Um, there are so many great technicians out there. So many great technicians. You could never think that you're great. Yes. You know, there's yes. so many great, you know, a guy came in from Chicago last year. I think he was 35, 40 years old. Young guy. But he had won the um, the nationals, the jiu-jitsu nationals. So when he came into the dojo, uh, of course, Helson says, uh, go with Van Cleef. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy was quick, strong. Even though he submitted me like four or five times in five minutes, I learned a great deal from him. Yes, sir. I learned a great deal. You know, it's it's hard to explain to people that don't have this experience like you and I have. They don't yes. understand that you win even if you lose. Yes, sir. You know, there's no losing. Right. You know, you, you win by doing it. You, you win by staying there. You, you win by... Taking the pain, you win by um, doing everything you can to get the most out of yourself to just stay alive during that encounter, which is really what the whole thing represents. You know? Yes, sir. Martial arts is, is a microcosm of real life. You know, you take the good, you discard the bad, you try to, to increase your, your capacity as a human being, you, you, you try to develop yourself so that. You don't make the same mistakes over and over and over, which is what most people do all their lives. Martial arts has given me a direction, and I, and I, and I thank God that Moses and Ronald Duncan and George Cofield and people like that, all the family, took their time in their life to give me what they gave me. And there's no way you can repay that, because if it were not for them, I would have not made it to 78 years old and still be able to function. You know, most guys at 78, they're done. I try to get old guys to come to the dojo all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got all those problems. Yeah. I don't know. Shoulder replacement, 14 years ago. Mm. In screws, everything. I'm still rolling. My wife drags me to the gym three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm in the gym, getting the weights. Tuesday, Thursday. I'm jujitsu, and I don't see that changing unless I die. Come on, I, I don't, I don't see it changing. How could it change? If I stop training, I'll, I'll have, probably have a heart attack. I'll probably put on hundred pounds. You know what happens when you don't do it. <laughs> right, right, right. Do what you. And then they kill me. I put on like twenty five pounds. It's like, oh no. And then the <laughs> dojo was closed for a year. Oh my goodness! Yeah, right. right. So if you're not rolling, I was depressed. Yes. I was always hangry. You know, yes. angry, hungry, angry. I yes. was always that. Uh, my muscle that atrophy. You know, I looked at my arm, I said, what happened to my muscles? You know? Mm -hmm. And that, thankfully, all the gyms have opened. The dojos have opened. And everybody back. I mean, everybody's back with, with the fire, you know, with the, with the burning. You yeah. know? Yes, 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 yes. It's all mindset. You know, just being back is wonderful. You know, and I don't care if I'm submitting 10 times in a night. I really don't care about that. I try my best with each guy that I roll with. If he submits me, bravo for him, man. And I always thank him. At the end of the roll, man, thank you so much. You don't know what you've done. Because they don't even realize what they've given me. By giving hmm. me the honor of rolling for five minutes. And really putting pressure on me. You know, yes, real yes. pressure, you know, that knee and the belly stuff. That stuff is painful. You know, those arm bars, those wrist cranks and stuff. You know, that stuff is painful, man. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I hope, I hope they, you know, they, they, I hope they get a chance to really know who you are also, you see, because that is, I mean, it, I don't know. It's just. It's just, um, it, it, it can teach them something. So, you know, not just that this is an older man, but 
this is this is one who has had that has this kind of background that gets on the floor with everybody. This is something Sometimes when I'm rolling the guys, maybe I want to bomb me on the top. I look around at the dojo, nobody else is rolling. Everybody's looking. Everybody's looking. <laughs> me away. I mean, that really That's good. me away. Yes. I'm being choked and I'm trying to get this guy's arm and I look around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Wow>. boy. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. it's awesome. I'm so, I'm so appreciative to be able to do this, you know? Oh, so, man. What else would I be doing if I was 78? First of all, I never thought I'd live this long, you know? After Vietnam, after being a cop, after all these different things. I've been shot, stabbed, all that stuff in my life. So yeah. what made me think that I was going to reach this? I thought I'd be dead by 50, really. You know, the, the life that I've had? Yes. I mean, and, 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 and same. I've done all the good stuff and the bad stuff. I've shot heroin. I've done all kinds of stuff in my life. Man, man. My father died from a heroin overdose when I was 18 years old. Wow. So I, I've, I've seen all of that. You know, yeah. I've seen all of that. You know, I, I stopped drinking when I turned 50. So imagine I had a glass of wine every year for my birthday. Other than that, I'm done. Yes, sir. I'm yes, done. sir. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I could smoke the cigarettes when I left the Marine Corps in 1966. When I got discharged, I stopped. I threw that packet of Lucky's in the shit can. And I never touched <laughs> cigarettes. Before. I mean, yeah. I still smoke marijuana. But that's another story. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and I've never competed straight. <laughs> so he, say it again. And I've never competed straight. <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. Never. How about never? Wow. <laughs> acid and mescaline and hallucinogenics. <laughs> and it went on to, <laughs> Imagine. When I was going to NYU, Timothy Leary came into class one day and he gave me a tab of mescaline. Mm. I went to Santa Urban's dojo that night and I had a great sparring. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> remember Joe Hess? Yes. I, Joe, I knocked Joe Hess out with a spinning back kick in the face that night. Oh my God. It was my accident. I couldn't tell the, dis the distance. You know? <laughs> he, was, he was moving, you know. Was like, <laughs> and he's standing. I just run and boom, kicked him right in the face, knocked him out. Sensei Urban said, uh, "Go sit in the corner." Sensei <laughs> <laughs> Urban called me Michael for about seventeen years, and he called me Michael because Michael was Michael Corleone, the son of the Godfather. Uh huh. Uh huh. He would call me Michael in front of my mother. And my mother said, "Who's he talking to?" I said, "My." He's talking to me. <laughs> oh man! Wow. When I went to Hong Kong, you know, I stayed in Hong Kong about ten years. I really got involved with Wing Chun. I studied with Liam Ting. I met Vietnam. I went to the school a few times. Wow. And now I'm studying with Samuel Park. So I'm continuing my Wing Chun because that sensitivity stuff. It's, it's very important. A lot of styles don't deal with sensitivity. And I, I remember Bob telling me years ago that you have to be sensitive to, to motion and feeling in order to detect what a person's intentions are. Yeah, yeah. And, and with jujitsu, you, you really have that close contact thing so you can feel those things. You right. Can actually, you can actually feel them before they happen. Yes. You know? You can yeah. look in a person's eyes and say, oh, no, this isn't good. <laughs> this is not going to be good. <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's mindset. You can't quit. You can never take failure as, as failure because it's only that time. It's only that time. You know, we, have, we, we live in the past, most of us. You think about what we used to do that was wrong, the last class was shared, this or that. But every time, every day, you have an opportunity to change everything, not just something. Mm. Every second, you have a chance to change your complete life. Look at that. Many people don't take that opportunity. Every day, you know, last night I went to sleep, my shoulder was killing me. I woke up this morning, I did my dips, my push-ups, my, my, you know, and like, like nothing. Right. I, I feel it now, 
But you can't stop. You have to continue. You know, you, you have to find something that you love, whether it's martial arts or whatever. You have to find something that you love and that you have passion for, and you have to continue that for infinity, to infinity. Yes. I can't. I don't see myself ever stopping martial arts. It may not be jujitsu. It may not be Chinese goju. It may not be whatever. But I don't see myself stopping the connection I have with myself in the universe, which I got through martial arts. Yes, sir. There's no way that that can stop. Well, I'm, I'm involved in lots of things. I'm writing some books. You know, I'm doing some movies. I have an animated film that I'm finishing now. I just, I just uh, launched my video game, The Tower of the Black Dragon. So oh wow! Epic, epic is picking that up next month. So nice. The things, things are moving along. My son, who's a video game buff was actually one of the creators of the Tower of the Black Dragon video game because he helped me design characters and movements and he helped me write the codes. Mm. He's old. These kids today, they're, they're smart. You yeah. know, my son is 15, but he's been flying planes for seven years. Wow. He started him taking flying lessons when he was like seven. Mm. He's 15 now. You know, in two more years, he can get a pilot's license. Oh man! I never had an opportunity like that. Wow! Never. You know, my father was a merchant in Maine. My mother was a housewife, and you know, my, my mother and father. My father was never there because he was a merchant in Maine, and he wasn't the nicest guy. I was his punching bag. Mm. You know, in in the forties, the parenting was different. Do what I say or that. You know what I mean? It wasn't, uh, don't hit me up. That was all part of the program. And like my father never said he loved me. Imagine never. And that kind of thing. So him being abusive, that drove me to go out, meet little John, meet Doc, meet my friends at the St. John's Community Center, start my world there. I joined a, a group called the Blue Jackets. Mm -hmm. And it was a semi-military organization for teenagers. Okay. And, you know, you learn manual arms, you learn how to live outside, uh, create fire, you know, all, all the stuff that you need for survival. It's a survivalist training crew. Yeah. So between that and you remember who Gabby Hayes was? Gabby Hayes. He was the yeah. sidekick of Roy Rogers. Oh, okay, yes, yes. The old guy with the beard and whatnot. Absolutely, yes. Well, he was a giant mentor to me. Mm. Yes. I was a member of his um, ranch when I was a kid. You know how they take poor kids from the ghetto and they bring them up to the ranch and they teach them how to ride and rope and brand and all that stuff and she horses. But that's what my brother and I did when I was 10 years old. So I was riding horses at 10, shoeing horses, doing rodeo stuff. When I was a kid. So not having any money as a kid going, you know, in the 40s, we didn't have money. You know, you try to find things that will fill your day and that you can learn something from. So Gabby Hayes's ranch was an amazing thing for me. You know, it was an amazing thing. I remember a horse stepped on my foot and broke my instep. Yes. While I was shooting the other foot, it just stepped over and stepped on my bare foot. Oh! Ooh, everything. Broke all the bones on the top of my foot. And I was like 11. Oh. You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, I started bodybuilding when I was 12. And gymnastics. You know, I went to boys' high school. I was on the gymnastics team, the, the leaderboard, the redshirt leaderboard. And, you know, I, I swam for boys' high. Walk distance. And so I've always been um, involved in fitness and what was lacking in martial arts that I thought, and still today, is the fitness level, the fitness um, level of people. And yes. Most of them are not fit. And, and, and I'm not going to cry about their diets because my diet's not the best either. But I don't have a 50-inch waist. I have a 34-inch waist. You know what I mean? So you have to you have to maintain certain standards within yourself 
before you even think about all this stuff. You know? Yes. I do my exercise, my, my maintenance every day. There's no excuse. My wife says, get your fat ass up out of the bed, <laughs> get those push ups, get those dips. And I got a TRX. I put it in my ceiling in my living room. I drilled a hole in the ceiling, put that bolt in there so I could hook my TRX up there in my living room. In the living room? <laughs> That's how I am, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My crunch bench, everything. <laughs> but I go to the gym, but I always make sure that I have enough to, to do the homework. Yes, sir. I even have a bar at home. A what? Bob. You know the body opponent bag? You know, oh, the, okay. The, okay. Yes. I have those at home. My wife uses it every day. Nice. Nice. Ears. You know, she's <laughs> Yeah, you are martial arts. That's right. <laughs> I feel bad if I don't work out one day. You know, when they closed the gym to him why I was really messed up because it's not just the working out, which I could do at home, but it's the interaction between people that you see working out. Like um, I'm benching 200 pounds, doing eight reps, and I might see a guy next to me. He's 20 years old, he's got 100 pounds on me. I said, what? <laughs> what do you expect to get from that, Matt? You know, 100 pounds, and he's like 220. You know, right. you have to put pressure on your muscles to make them work harder to get the result that you want. Yes, sir. You know, I'm, I'm one of those. So. If it were not for fitness, I probably would have never been good in the martial arts. You know, I, my fitness um, level was higher than most people that I ran across in my life so far in the martial arts. And, um, you know, when back in the 60s, I was doing a thousand front kicks, a thousand side kicks, a thousand round kicks per day. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guys like Perry, I'd make them do 5,000 kicks after class because they messed up. You know? <laughs> so, and, and you can't do that anymore. Right. People consider that abuse now. Yeah, but yeah. In those days, since everyone say, you shit bird, give me 2,000 punches. You know, I mean, like nothing. <laughs> and, you, you, right. and it's 2,000, you know, and you don't care how long it took. He says, right. it's going to take uh, till 9 o'clock. He says, well, it'll take till 9 o'clock. You know? I left guys like Perry in the dojo punching when I left. <laughs> I have 3,000 more to go. They, they're still punching. <laughs> the martial arts world, the, 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 the global community, has so much talent. So very much talent. And we, the people of color, we, the first fucking people. Come on. We know. Yes, we sir. Are. We're the first man. We're the first man. People don't relate to that. We are the first man. Yes, sir. That's, That's right. That's to say something. Look how long we've lasted. We, we, we made through middle passage. We've done everything. If everything. millions of our ancestors survived slavery, how can we give up now? Come on. That's right. That's no, right. I mean, really, I'm, and I came up through a very bad time with race and stuff. I was lynched in 1963 in Kingston, North Carolina. Mm. And that's because I didn't want to sit in the back of a bus. So they threw me off the bus. Cops picked me up. They threw me in, in the slammers, you know. They let me out. The Ku Klux Klan grabbed me. They broke my nose. They broke my jaw. They knocked out eight of my teeth. They broke nine ribs. They broke my left arm. All the fingers in my left hand. They ruptured my left knee and really ruptured my groin. Mm, mm. I was in the hospital three months, then on light duty. And then I went to Vietnam. Wow. Just think about the system that we're living in. Mm. Where, where racism and everything is just apple pie, man. Right. And, right. You know, I, I don't need to get off on a political rant, but we're living in a time that every person of color Better be studying martial arts. Yes, sir. You're telling it. That's right. Better be studying martial arts. You better get your NRA thing. You... That's right. The shit 
will eventually hit the fan. And if we're not prepared, I'm not from the music school. Everybody I meet, I try to convince them to do martial arts in some capacity. Martial arts cannot hurt them. They can only enhance their life. It can only, forget the protect yourself thing. It changes the way you think. You set priorities in your mind to do things that will be good for you instead of things that will be bad for you. You know? Yes. I can't see living without doing martial arts. I think my, my world would be dead. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have an interest. Because, you know, at my age, I've done everything. I've been rich, I've been poor, I've been traveled, I've done movies, I've been... I've probably done everything that I wanted to do. And so by the time you reach a certain age, you're not impressed by regular stuff or bullshit. And so when, when you get older, you just have to concentrate on making yourself better yourself better every day. You yes. have to grow better because as a as a total entity, everybody thought that they, could, they had the opportunity every day to make themselves better. We'd be living in a much better world. Yes, sir. Especially our people. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm very proud of you, Anthony. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you in that you've continued what you do to the highest level that you can. I'm proud of the fact that you're a Muslim. I'm proud of the fact that you've taken it upon yourself to create this uh, this legacy that's going to last way after you and I are dead. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank a lot. Thank you. People will talk about you and me like they talk about Jackie Robinson and and whomever from the old days, our heroes, and you're one of our heroes. You are. Yes, sir. I mean, but you, 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 you're such, I mean, I'm well, nobody. I love you. I'm, I'm nobody, man. I'm just a guy from Brooklyn that didn't quit. That's, <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I could it. do another 12 books. I could do more video. I could do all that stuff. But it, it, it's an example that we set yes. for ourselves and our people and the global community. Yes, sir. We have to keep going. You know, you wake up in the morning, let's go keep going. And you know what? There is nothing else. That's right. Those are the three things Sensei Urban gave me when I was 15 years old. Let's go keep going. There is nothing else. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, 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 um, you clearly are um, an example and have been that for many years for me. And I appreciate you and what you do. I, uh, you have a litany of students that, that, that you have taught and whatnot. I mean, you have, you know, I, I, I don't even wanna say hundreds, you know, you have, you have thousands of those who have looked at you and still do. So uh, again, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to uh, oh, share you. your life, you know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't do interviews that often, you know, but I have a, a, a highly respect you, and I've wanted to do this from when I first heard you that doing working with the masses. I said, "Oh man, I have to get this." You know, oh my god! Gotta, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, it happened. Right? Yes, sir. Please, you don't even know. I mean, and really, I got to tell you. I wanted to ask you earlier, it's just, you know, you are that, you're, you're like that for me. You're up there, you see. And I, I, I understand and I appreciate your position, but you're somebody to me. <laughs> so um, uh, again, I, I, I wanna thank you. Uh, I wanna thank everyone out there that is looking uh, to uh, listen to the things that are being said, please, please take the opportunity to not look at this one time. You know, look at it again. On March 3rd, I'm being inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame with LeBron James and Tiger Woods. 
Awesome. Say that one more time, please. August 3rd through the 6th, I'll be inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame with LeBron James and Tiger Woods in uh, Columbus, Ohio at the Arnold Classic. That is awesome. I'm, I'm just amazed that that would happen. You know, I, I got called by Dr. Robert Goldman um, about eight months ago and he said, uh, you've been inducted and this and that. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, it's like, you never think that you'd be accepted on like a, a global level like that. Yes, yes. Well, it's, it's a little much, you know. Uh, but I understand that we have to just keep going whether we get these accolades or not. Yes. When I'm, I'm sort of like looking forward to it. And I don't normally look forward to those things. Yes. I'm looking forward to meeting Arnold and getting my, my, my terminated picture with him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to get with you so I can get my Black Dragon picture. <laughs> well, I've got a couple of films coming out uh, working on this year and next year. I just got called by uh, Leo Fong to do a zombie movie. It's called The Seven, um, The Savage Seven. The Savage it's, Seven. It's a futuristic kind of thing where uh, I'm part of a, an elite uh, paratrooper kind of guy that goes to different towns cleaning up the zombies. <laughs> I'm killing zombies through the whole movie. But yes. I was told that I'm going to be killed and that Leo Fong and Danny Trejo are going to revenge me. So it's going to be quite an experience. You know? And then the other project that I'm working on is Make a Difference for Michael Jai White's company, Gigantic Studios. And we're shooting down at uh, Tyler, Tyler Perry Studio in Georgia. And it's called Make a Difference. It's like Boys in the Hood, but with martial arts. Nice. And my character, as I said before, I'm playing Moses Powell. Wow, see, come on so now. I'm like really, psyched up about that <laughs> play my teacher you know so i'm really trying to i'm looking at every tape i can find of dark and every because i want to i'm going to have all the you know i'm going to have all the stuff <laughs> all now, yes. you know what i mean yeah yes sir. Uh, and uh, you know i just finished my documentary from the hangman and uh, I'm, I'm very very close to signing a deal with a major film company to do a feature for Ron Bankley's story. Oh, nice. My son, Shihan, just sold his martial arts movie to Amazon TV, to mm -hmm. Apple TV. So uh, things are moving along. Next year should be a good year. And as far as um, business uh, adventures, um, Glenn Curry and I are finishing up on the Black Heroes 3, yeah, um, with uh, C.W. Uh, Odette Russell on the cover. Yeah. And uh, I'm partially finished with number four, which has Wesley Snipes on the cover. Nice. Yes, so, sir. Um, so things, things are happening as far as you can't stop moving. You have to create this constant forward motion. And you have to, instead of talk, you have to just keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. Yes. yes. If you don't do it, who, who's going to make Black Heroes of the Martial Arts if I didn't do it? No right. one. I did the right. first volume in 1996, and people told me it won't even sell. No one's going to buy that. Who cares about that? And so thousands and thousands of copies. So we can't yeah. say that no one wants to know about us. Come on. That's right. And the next project is that, that I'm speaking with is Black Heroes of the Martial Arts the documentary, which you'll be featured in too. Oh my God. So I got a lot of projects working, you know, and I, I want to be able to leave a legacy for us. Yes. Not for me. It's yeah. for us. Everything we do now is not personal. That's right. It's for us. If we don't leave a legacy, who's going to leave our legacy? Mm. Who's going to leave our legacy? You can see yes. from the past, no one will do it. No one will do it. That's, and that's right. sad. It we have so much talent. We have so much talent out there. That blows me away sometimes. And I'm angry about the fact that no one wants to do it. And then they want to get on me 
Why didn't you pick this person for Hall of Fame? How come this person's not in it? How come this person's not in the book? This, he's a black hero too. But, you know how many calls and emails and stuff I get weekly from that stuff? Mm. Way too many. <laughs> yes, sir. You want to write a book about black girls at the martial arts? Write it. Don't yeah. depend on me to, to sponsor you or to, you know what I mean? I knew nothing about writing books when I wrote my first book in 1980. I wow. wrote The Manual of the Martial Arts, which became the textbook for the Secret Service and the FBI. Mm. It became a it became a bestseller. I became a millionaire from my first book. It wow. blew me. Anthony, it blew me away. Man. My agent called me and said, we sold 300,000 copies out. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? Awesome. Because it took me about took me about seven months to write the manual of martial arts. It was a conglomerate of five or six different styles and into one just to give an overview. And yeah. it blew me away that we sold half a million copies. I was like, you know, I mean, that's shocking. Wow. From a guy that got a GED who had to have his military get him into college. I mean. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's blessed. That, that's You're blessed. 11 books ago. My newest book is called Sentences. It's the layman's guide to Zen psychotherapy, which is my first total motivational and inspirational book. Mm. I just finished it about a month ago. So I'm just putting the last editing pieces in it and some artwork and things. But uh, I feel that this will be my most momental, monumental piece because it's, it's not directed to martial arts, it's directed to society at large in a way that it will give you a way to look at yourself yes. and expand your own potential by just developing the skills that you already have. Yes, sir. And you know, we're, we're, I'm working on a series now called Super Weapon. It's a four episode series. Yes. We did one in 1976. Number two is 92% finished right now. Number three is 50% finished. And number four, I haven't started yet. Nice. I'm going to put them all together and Apple TV wants it. So automatically, we're going we're gonna to be able to see our faces, Come our on. faces on. in 81 countries. Africa Prime is looking to pick up Super Weapon 2. Mm. Africa Prime 400 countries, 20 languages they're going to translate it into. This is going to be really big for us, man. That's nice. Because That's most great. of the people think super weapon nobody ever heard of. Right, right. And how can nobody have ever heard of, like maybe yourself or, or, or Ronald Duncan? Or, see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look outside of the martial arts. In the martial arts, we are known. Outside of the martial arts, they don't know us. Right. That's, that's why I'm so impressed by being inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame because this is going to reach the world. That's nice. This isn't just the, right. the Karate Hall of Fame or the Black Belt Hall of Fame, which I've been to all of those things. And it's great. I appreciate it and whatnot. But global is different. Yes. Global gives us that insight for the, the complete international Anybody. It allows us to be able to be seen where we would never go. Yes, you know, sir. I, I've traveled a great deal of my life, but I've probably been to 100 countries, you know? Yes. About like 25 passports. I keep all my passports. So I have a stack of like 25 of them, and all of them have extensions. You know, you have to have the extension to get the stickers. So yeah. I'm looking at, and I forget the places I've been, you know? And I've seen martial arts all over the world, the best is still here. Yes. The best is still here. Yes. I've never seen better martial arts than I have in the United States anywhere. And I've trained in China, Japan, Philippines. I've actually trained in those and lived in those places. There is no better martial arts than here. Yes, sir. No? And San Lucas, Mite Rio, Jiu-Jitsu. They're at the top of that paradigm. They're at the top of that triangle, man. Mm, mm. Not the bottom, not the base, the top. 
Beautiful. Because the mindset, the mindset of martial arts for survival, not sport, is the real thing. Yes, sir. And I'm so happy that uh, I've had the opportunity and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep Come pushing. on now. I'm going to write another 10 books. Come on. I am. Yes, sir. Yeah. I believe it. And this Ultimate Warrior Hall of Fame thing, I'm going to do a documentary featuring everybody that I've inducted. Mm. That's my next project. Yes, I yes. Decided lining up. That's why I'm asking everybody for the acceptance speech because I need all of these. Yes. For the foundation of. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's where I'm at right now. Man, well, I mean, <laughs> you, that's where you are right now. I mean, that is all over the place. And so much is going on uh, while you're training, you are working, your, your mind, you're working. You're, you're doing so much. That's why you're such a great example and, and a blessing. And the beautiful part about you is that you don't claim to be anything, but you know, I gotta say beauty, <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> so you can't take that from me. <laughs> so so uh, you're very welcome. Thank you, love you. And um, you know, we, we're definitely gotta do this again and extend it because it's this didn't, this didn't hit the, to the top of the barrel, you know, it, it didn't do anything, but I'm glad that we did something. It's the beginning, and I like to continue. I'm happy that you chose me. Thank you so much. Thank really you. Happy. Thank you. May you have a, a wonderful uh, uh, rest of, of this day and uh, a, a wonderful uh, continuation of your life. May God continue to Thank bless you. you. Thank you so much. You. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you so much. Yes, uh, appreciate you too. <laughs> one of the shining lights in my life. Thank you. Man, thank you. You just keep me smiling. <laughs> I can't even stop. All right, family. Listen, all of you out there, um, uh, again, this was awesome for me. Uh, I don't know what it was for you, but it was awesome for me. I appreciate um, uh, my, my brother, uh, mentor, my friend. Uh, you know, this student over here, <laughs> I appreciate him for sharing his light um, to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you make sure that you study the, the, the conversation that was happening. Don't, don't, and don't lean on where you feel you are okay with, lean on the areas that you're weak at so that you can become better and learn more. So again, thank you all. Subscribe to uh, Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad's YouTube channel, and uh, let's keep this let's keep this rolling. Let's keep this going. All right. Thank all you right. again, thank sir. You. Thank you. <laughs> all right, y'all. Take care. Every student of a master here today, you reflect your master teacher. You want to walk like him. You want to talk like her, but you start by having an object in front of you that you admire, admire, admire.